Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about the Blessed Virgin Mary um, because it is the first uh, Saturday uh, of the month, and this is where we who honor the Blessed Virgin Mary um, honor the first Saturday devotion to her. Now, some people may, may say, well, what's that? Um, <clears throat> so, the first Saturday devotion was given to the three children visionaries in Fatima, Portugal, who saw and interacted with the Virgin Mary uh, during the miracle um, of the sun. Now, this is one of the apparitions of the Virgin Mary, where the Virgin Mary told the children things. She showed the children uh, hell and that lots of sinners go there. And that all the people there who were witnessing this event, they couldn't see the Virgin Mary, only the children could. And all the people there, she told them that she is going to lead them to her son. She also said that because of many of her children who are members in the in the body of Christ Christians who don't honor Mary or don't love her or speak badly about her or even worse teach their children not to love her causes thorns to be to to stab her in her heart so that's why if you see a lot of statues of the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, representing the Fatima apparition, what the what the children said that she was wearing, what she looked like, how she was dressed. You'll see that her immaculate heart is on the center of her chest, and around her heart is something that looks like um, it looks like a, a rose bush, uh, like like um, like a stem, but it's in a circle, and it has has uh, thorns coming out of it. And it's and it's around her heart. She explained to us that the way that we can help make reparations for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary that hurt her um, is if for five consecutive first Saturdays, if those who love her will go to confession pray the rosary, and go to Holy Communion on that day, um, on the first Saturday of every month for five consecutive months, then one thorn from her heart will be removed. So you can, you, so you can be one of her children who help ease her pain. And there's millions of us all over the world who love her, and if just one of us stays true to this devotion, then a thorn is removed from her heart. And if many of us stay true to this devotion, the thorns from her heart um, will, will almost never hurt her. Okay. So as much as the world, as much as the devil convinces the world to hate the mother of Christ and our spiritual mother, for we are his body, um, God still has a plan to help the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. And by his mercy, he's allowed us to be able to participate in loving her as devoutly as she loves us. So she goes out of her way to intercede for us with her son. Um, you know, she, she obtains graces for us um, from her son. Um, even sometimes when, when we can't or um, we may not think that, uh, you know, we may not even know what graces we necessarily need, but our mother does. And she will help us use those graces that God, um, that she obtains for us from God. And so um, she takes it an, even a step further. You know, every mother knows their child and what their child needs as well as a father does. But a father can, um, can also uh, be stern and strong and instruct 
and educate and teach um, lessons and things like that. And whereas the mother can also have a softer side and a more, um, uh, how you say, delicate approach to helping her ch the ch her child grow. Um, and so both a mother and father can help in this regard in helping their child grow. So um, that's how, at least that's how I see it. Um, so any devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary is greatly um, respected and loved by God. Someone who loves the Blessed Virgin Mary um, like he does uh, and, and how he, he loved her so much that everything she did was perfect, um, uh, you know, that he, she became queen of heaven and earth, the highest of all saints, okay? And so, so Jesus and Mary rule heaven together, you know, this is typical in, uh, Jewish, uh, in the Jewish tradition where, you know, uh, a son who would reign would generally have his mother uh, would be the queen because generally the king uh, would have many wives and concubines. Now, this isn't the case necessarily uh, with Jesus. Um, however, uh, the tradition still stands that the mother is queen. Um, we see this in uh, the book of Kings um, where Solomon, uh, King so David, passed his, the throne to King Solomon. King Solomon was actually the love child of Bathsheba, which was uh, David's close friend, his wife. And so while his close friend was off in battle, uh, um, him and Bathsheba uh, caught feelings for each other and he sinned. And God forget God, God, and he confessed these things to God. And so anyway, long story short, uh, Solomon ended up taking the throne when David died. And so David, uh, so Solomon had Bathsheba as queen, okay, because uh, I, think, I think David had already made her queen, but however, she remained queen because Solomon had so many wives and concubines. Um, and so that was how it, how, how it worked. And you even see an example of a queen mother interceding for someone else with her son, the king, which is King Solomon, and uh, and she enters the the throne room and says, and you know, and says, uh, um, and says, uh, uh, son, you know, I have something to ask you, and please don't deny me. And Solomon requests a throne be brought for his mother, and he says, here, mother, come and sit at my right hand. Whatever you ask of me, I will grant to you. Okay, so this is an example of a, a, a son who is king uh, answering, um, giving his mother who is queen whatever she asks for. Um, we also see an example of this uh, at the wedding feast at Cana, where the Blessed Virgin Mary interceded um, for the stewards who had ran out of wine, who the, the bride and groom had run out of wine, and the stewards approached Mary and let her know, and Mary interceded for the stewards with Jesus into helping helping them. So, so um, we see this a few times in the Bible, uh, um, the Queen Mother interceding um, on behalf of others uh, with with the son who is king and we know Christ is the king so um, this was just an, another example of that so I hope that kind of opened your eyes a little bit or enlightened you uh, some um, on how Catholics view Mary as well as um, the first Saturday devotion to the mother of Christ uh, our queen um, so uh, that we can help her um, and so just set it on your calendar the first Saturday of every month, and many churches, many parishes, even though it's COVID, um, they have special mass, a special mass um, that you can go and attend and, and help her. Um, so, okay, so thanks again for watching The Upper Room. Uh, again, thank you for all your comments on um, 
on the video about uh, praying four rosaries a day. I was surprised at how much, uh, uh, how many views it's got and and how many people are attracted to it. So I'll try to make more videos on the, the rosary as well. Um, thanks again for watching. Check me out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Follow the links below. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Welcome to the Upper Room. And please subscribe and uh, watch some more uh, Cool Faith videos. Uh, see you next week.